<laughs> Hello everyone, and today I want to talk about my top three favorite casters in World of Warcraft Legion, and for specifically PvP, because I feel that I have had the chance to pretty much test every single class on the Legion beta, and also uh, give a PvP perspective in a video format, but now I think it's time that you guys are going to be choosing your mains, you're going to be experiencing PvP in just a couple weeks after Legion comes out, or maybe you're going to be leveling up your PvP honor levels, uh, which is going to be a really big deal. So I think it's an awesome opportunity to tell you uh, exactly what I have seen to be some of the strongest or most played, you know, popular classes on the Legion beta. Um, so these are in no particular order, and I want to go ahead and just dive right into it to the first class. The first class that I want to talk about is the Shadow Priest, because the Shadow Priest offers a very well-rounded class overall. It's one of those classes that has Dot Pressure with their Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch, but they can also offer Burst Damage in their Void Form. Uh, so people that haven't played Shadow Priest, what Void Form is, is it's something that you build up, it's a resource that's 0 to 100, kind of like a Rage Bar or a Maelstrom Bar um, from Shamans, and then you enter this Void Form, you get a 30% damage increase, and you start stacking up haste, but that insanity starts to drain. Okay, so with that insanity draining, what your job is, is to really keep that insanity going up by putting out more damage, by using your Void Bolts, by using those Mind Blasts, and just keeping that up for as long as you can so you can get the biggest haste buff and also stay in Void Form as long as possible and use your Void Torrent. Um, what's really cool about the Priest overall is that you can have kind of this dot damage, the spread pressure with those dots, but also have the burst damage in that Void Form. Um, but not only just that, you also have this well-rounded utility and off-healing type of hybrid that's in the game, and it seems like the Shadow Priest has really taken that role very well due to the class design um, overall from like the, the big picture of it, right? So this class in particular has a really awesome off-heal whenever it comes to Shadow Men, because Shadow Men is just a very strong thing, um, a very strong heal overall, but it also has Power Word Shield, which is only a 67 second cooldown, um, and it works about half, half of the amount of health that a Shadow Men would, would work on, and it also offers that in Absorb format. So that's really cool. Um, but on top of that, they also have Vampiric Embrace, which is an ability that you can use, uh, it's a cooldown actually, and it's an ability that you can use where you'll start dealing healing out uh, to your teammates based off of the amount of damage that you do with your mind blast with your vampiric touches with all that damage you're putting out it actually converts into a percentage healing onto your teammates and that's very useful especially with one of the pvp talents that reduces that cooldown on vampiric embrace uh, but not only that guys you also have a really sol solid defensive cooldown which is dispersion um it's on a pretty relatively low cooldown so you can be saved multiple times in arena and you can use your void shield which will help you uh stay alive on top of that whenever you don't have dispersion um, but for when those really big emergency situations happen, you're going to use your Life Swap, which is a really, really cool ability that was back in Cataclysm, was removed from the game, and is now back in the game. Um, and I think that this is one of the coolest abilities in PvP, and Shadow Priest now have it back, so you're going to be seeing a lot of those being played in Arena because of just how well-rounded they are and also how effective they are whenever they're in pretty much any team comp overall. The next class I would like to talk about is actually just the mage, and I'm not going to limit it to a specific talent tree right now because there's been a lot of buffs and nerfs going on for every single class spec of the mage, um, and I think that it would be irresponsible for me to label it directly to one spec of the class because there's pretty much been a healthy variety of everyone playing all the different types of specs on the Legion beta. I think that this is one of, one of the most versatile classes just because of all the three specs seem to be one, you know, played all the time there seems to be a lot of different people playing the mage overall and i feel that this class really thrives in just a couple areas which is going to be burst damage um burst damage control and mobility so for burst damage it's different for every class or every spec but um pretty much what you're going to do is you're going to build up and do like a certain amount of burst damage as opposed to putting up dots like a lot of different classes like moonkins would or shadow priest would or affliction warlocks or warlocks in general right uh, you pretty much do all this burst damage, but really the thriving point of mages in general is going to be the control and the mobility. So the control is really shown through Polymorph and Ring of Frost mainly, um, but you also have stuff like Frost Nova, or if you play Fire, you have Dragon's Breath and Counterspell. 
Um, with these control type things, um, you're able to lock down a healer, for example, an enemy healer on an arena team and then create like an advantageous situation for you to be able to kill one of the enemy teammates, um, which can be very valuable since you can spam those polymorphs, you can keep someone in a CC uh, chain for a really long time um, and also have multiple ways of getting those CC chains off. But what's really interesting about Frost Mage or Mage in general is that they're very squishy right now. Um, they die very quickly since if you take Shimmer, you don't have two ice blocks, which is one of the trade-offs for taking that talent. Um, but it seems to be what everyone seems to be playing on the Legion beta. So I think that uh, mages are very squishy overall, but if you're able to be good at them, you're able to land those CCs and kill targets faster than they're able to kill you, you can make it happen. And I think that it's definitely a class to be checking out in Legion. And last but not least, I want to talk about what is seemingly to be the exact opposite of a Frost Mage. And that is going to be the Affliction Warlock. The Affliction Warlock seems to be the tanky, um, immobile caster of Legion in this expansion, but also uh, really thrives off of doing uh, spread pressure through dots and debuffs. Um, so this class in particular is more about, you know, picking out, say, three targets in arena in a three versus three arena, right? So you're going to have those three targets and then all of their health are going to slowly go down as you do damage and keep those dots up on every single target. But the main thing is that uh, this class really doesn't have a whole lot of mobility like the mage would. And, you know, since Shadow Priest is kind of that in-between of mobility with the body and soul talent, um, I think that Affliction Warlock really is the lowest of them all in terms of mobility because they really can't get to another target very quickly, um, you know, in order to land those fears and get those CCs off and get those dots off and land the kills when they need to. So that's kind of the trade-off there. But what you do gain is a lot of tankiness. You have a lot of self-healing through stuff like Siphon Life, Drain life um, you have dark pact which works in absorb format by sacrificing your pet health um, which is a really big deal and then you also have like unending resolve which reduces the amount of damage taken but also gives you an immunity to interrupts for a certain amount of time and that's on a relatively low cooldown so i think that this this spec in particular is very tanky offers a lot of spread pressure and has seen a lot of play on the legion beta because of that spread pressure and it really does get a lot of overall damage out um, it's just not in the same format as you know say a frost mage would do with those huge glacial spikes and getting those big crits off um, it's just a little bit different but i do think that a Affliction Warlocks do have their place in the Legion beta based off of what I've seen over the multiple months of playing, um, you know, in the arena overall and just seeing how all the comps have been kind of, kind of coming together. And I think that these three specs are probably my favorite in terms of what specs I will be seeing in the Legion beta and overall are my opinion on which ones are the strongest, but in no particular order because they do work off like counters and stuff like that and some things counter them. So it's really hard to like place, you know, this is the best, this is the second best and whatnot. And last but not least, I want to talk about the other two classes that may not have made the cut, um, from my personal opinion, of the top three casters in Legion. Um, that's going to be the Moonkin and the Elemental Shaman. So first, let's talk about the Moonkin. So the Moonkin is one of those classes that is very similar to the Shadow Priest in terms of class design. It offers a spread pressure mechanic, which is the Sunfire and Moonfire dots, as opposed to the Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch of Shadow Priest, um, and then offers burst damage, you know, on demand through Star Surges and getting those empowerments and using your Soul the Rass and Lunar Strikes. I think that this class overall has a very similar playstyle. I really enjoy the playstyle and I definitely can see Mooncon players succeeding. Um, the thing is, is that I just don't know if it can quite compare to Shadow Priest due to the overall tuning of the Shadow Priest. Uh, Shadow Priest offers a little bit more consistent damage since they can get into void form about every minute or so. And uh, with Moonkin damage, you know, you only get that big power spike of damage whenever you use, you use Incarnation, which is a three minute cooldown. And I think that that's a really big deal. Um, you can get damage out every single minute as a Shadow Priest as opposed to three minutes. And I think that for the pace of PvP, um, you, you kind of do need that lower cooldown. Um, but overall, like the self-healing is really, you know, pretty much the same. There's really not a whole lot of difference going on there. Um, but I do think that the defensives are a little bit different for Shadow Priest because Shadow Priests have Dispersion and Life Swap, which is really, really important to save teammates. Um, whereas Moonkins only have the same amount of self-healing, uh, actually a little bit more self-healing with the Restoration Affinity. Um, and they do have a pretty much weaker overall defensive cooldown with Bar Skin as opposed to Dispersion. I think that if you're going to be playing Moonkin in Legion, I think that you can still succeed. I don't think that Moonkin is necessarily a bad class, I just don't think it, it really is the strongest class, which is kind of the point of this video. Um, I think that the Moonkin, if you're going to play it, you can still get high ratings, so definitely keep at it. Um, I like the class overall, I just think that the Shadow Priest is probably the better class um, in terms of the overall PvP sphere. 
Um, but that leads me to my next point is going to be the Elemental Shaman. So I have talked about the Ellie Shaman in previous videos, uh, uh, pretty much as the weakest caster in Legion because I feel that um, not only is the damage lower than other classes, uh, like the Shadow Priest or the UA Warlock or the Mage, I feel that the Elemental Shaman just doesn't quite keep up in a PvP atmosphere where melee are very strong. I think that the mobility of, of the Elemental Shaman is relatively low since they only have Gust of Wind and Ghost Wolf. Um, and I think that since the class is really more about supporting your teammates, I just don't know if it really does hold its own um, in a real PvP arena situation where you have like a Demon Hunter and a Windwalker monk training your face off. I think that the Elemental Shaman, it really, really lacks a lot of defensive capabilities. And I think that it's going to die against melee classes and melee cleaves in general, which in my opinion is a really big no-no for casters. Um, I think that if you are going to play a caster, if you're going to choose one and then expect strength out of it, you're probably going to be playing something like um, a mage with those two shimmers or uh, having something that can get away from those melee because those melee, you know, they're going to kill you. They do a lot of damage right now on the Legion beta. Um, they seem to do as as much as, or if not more, than most casters in the game. And I think that those melee will kill Elemental Shamans over any other caster. I think that the Elemental Shaman is probably the easiest of the five. But that does leave us to the end of the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to give a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for future videos, and also leave a comment down below of your thoughts and opinions. I would definitely love to hear them. Um, these are, again, my just, just my personal opinions of playing on the Legion and beta and my uh, overall understanding of the game. So I hope you did enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one.